Welcome to Conscious Movie Reviews. I'm your host, Joy Davis, and here to review Aquaman, a sci-fi action and adventure drama. Within the film, Arthur Curry was the firstborn child of Atlanta, princess of the underwater nation of Atlantis, and Thomas, a lighthouse keeper of the surface world in Maine. King Orvac set Atlantean commandos for her return, so she was forced into marriage, then bore a second child with him named Orm. A lighthouse can relate to isolation and loneliness that Thomas felt before Atlana arrived. Their relationship symbolized the interconnection between land and sea because the Earth's surface was created from primordial waters, birthed from the generative womb of all. Arthur, in this sense, was birthed by an Atlantean mother to serve as the bridge between land and sea. King Orvax had Atlana executed for having a half-breed son. Those close to her were told that she was fed to the creatures of the trench. Orm grew up to become bitter, blaming the loss of his mother on Arthur for being born and all surface dwellers for polluting the seas. He waged war against both. The ocean is often related to the subconscious where our primal feelings and core beliefs are stored. It's hidden from our conscious awareness, represented by land dwellers, who have an open shared intelligence. Waging war against the surface refers to Orm's subconscious mind that's full of fears and irritating core beliefs surfacing to his conscious awareness for a planned attack. When the conscious and subconscious are in alignment, you can manifest your goals in life more easily. But when they're out of alignment, you create self-sabotage. By polluting the oceans, we've created a systemic and gradual annihilation of our home planet that affects all life within it, an extreme form of self-sabotage. Arthur was trained at an early age to be a warrior by his mother's advisor, Nuidis Volko, by also having Mera, the daughter of King Nereus of Zebel, as his ally, they joined forces to stop Orm and find the magical trident of King Atlan. Whoever wields it can rule Atlantis and the Seven Kingdoms. Arthur's training by Volko was more about an exercise in mastering his lower natures so he can align his conscious mind with the subconscious to truly focus his powers of intent in service and protection of others. By being named Arthur, his destiny would resemble the legend of King Arthur pulling a sword from a stone to prove his legitimacy as the rightful ruler of England. As Aquaman, Arthur fought against pirates attempting to hijack a Russian submarine. Their leader, Jesse Kane, died in the confrontation as his son David watched, vowing to avenge his father's death. Historically, many of the pirates during the golden age of piracy between the years of 1650 and 1730 were black slaves in Panama known as Cimarrons, who ran away from their Spanish masters. They plundered and sought freedom in the high seas. As the son of Atlana, Arthur was gifted with her trident. David similarly received a knife that's part of his family legacy. The trident symbolized Arthur's inheritance of a power that gives from a place of abundance versus David inheriting a knife to represent a power that takes for greedy survival as scavengers of the sea. Orm was hell-bent on uniting the kingdoms by force to overtake the throne as Ocean Master, even though he's only second in line. He refused to acknowledge his bastard half-brother. Arthur, on the other hand, was reluctant to claim his rightful place as ruler of Atlantis after learning about his mother's alleged execution. He blamed himself for her death. When you don't know your true nature, there's a conflict within you. Kingship is about self-mastery over yourself. We all become like bastard half-breeds when we're ignorant about our divine birthright and purpose for being here. This was especially true for Orm. 
A duel between the brothers took place in Atlantis within a fiery ring of lava. The scene relates to the pressure of long-held heated emotions surfacing from their subconscious to deal with. If Arthur wins, Orm agreed to not attack the surface world. Mera was quick to intervene during the fight by using her hydrokinetic abilities for Arthur's survival and escape. At the Saharan Desert, a holographic message from King Atlan and Map in a Bottle provided Arthur and Mera with directions on how to locate the trident. Their next stop would be Sicily. By placing the bottle in the hand of the statue of Romulus, the trident's coordinates was revealed. David as Black Manta showed up with his commandos to stop them using Atlantean weaponry, but failed. Arthur's relationship to Orm resembled Romulus in Roman mythology, who killed his twin brother Remus for the right to build on a hill that would become Rome. Caught in a storm at sea, Arthur and Mera's ship was under attack by the creatures of the trench. They were saved by a mysterious being, Arthur's mother in disguise. She escaped execution to find herself stranded for years in the uncharted sea. Atlana encouraged her son to retrieve the trident behind the waterfall that was closely guarded by Carathen, a gigantic leviathan. Arthur communicated his greatest intent by telepathy to protect Atlantis and the surface. He was deemed worthy to pull the trident from Atlan's skeleton. The ocean is synonymous with the subconscious mind. By going to even greater depths of the ocean, it can symbolize the superconsciousness that functions on a higher level than the rational mind. It is that seat of power within us, where our higher self of boundless being is naturally intuitive and telepathic. This seat of power must be claimed as our true identity like Arthur's quest for the trident. Arthur did it by bypassing the gatekeepers of the subconscious called the critical gateway and reticular activating system that protects the mind's core beliefs represented by the creatures of the trench and Leviathan. With Atlan's trident in his possession, Arthur rallied the sea creatures for their help to stop his brother from attacking the surface. Orm and his forces were defeated in battle. He willingly gave up the fight when their mother appeared. Arthur was now able to ascend to the throne as Aquaman, son of the land and protector of the seas.